in this video we will be discussing about the route linking between two L3 out so in this topology you can see we have a router 1 connected to leaf 101 and router 1 there is a network behind router 1 which is 100.1.1.0 slash 24 and the router 2 which is connected to leaf 103 and there is a network 200.1.1.0 slash 24 behind the router 2 both the router 1 and router 2 are in the different VRF we have a router 1 is in the VRF 3 and router 2 is in the VRF 4 and the requirement is uh, both network to talk with each other, other so what we have done is we have created L3 out on leaf 101 towards router 1 L3 out 1 and uh, uh, there is uh, L3 out 2 we have created on the leaf 103 towards uh, router 2 okay so we just have some changes to that So here you can see we have a two L3 out created L3 out one and L3 out two. So L3 out one, which is uh, configured in VRF three, and uh, L3 out two that is configured in VRF four. Okay. So in the L3 out one. Uh, we have a uh, mark this subnet 100.1.1.0/24 and uh, for the l3 out to epg we have a 200.1.1.0/24 yeah so let me show you here so I do show IP route VR, uh, VRF3 I have configured a static route of 100.1.1.0 pointing to the router 1 and uh, in the leaf 103 in VRF2 we have 200.1.1.0 static route configured pointing to the router 2 So to share the subnet between two VRF, uh, the requirement is uh, first we'll have to share the subnet, okay, and then create a contract between both of the L3 out. So here we have a two option: shared route control subnet and shared security import subnet. So, so we'll have to click uh, both of them. Uh, if so shared router control subnet it basically used to do the routing control uh, so that actually helps to share the route from one l3 out to another l3 out um, and the shared security import subnet that uh, allow the communication between two subnet so i'll just check uh, and the same will do for the 200 subnet as well in l3 out 2 Shared route control subnet and shared security import subnet. Now we'll have to configure the contract. So I'll create a new contract. Route leak. I'll just give them route leak and see out. We'll give the same name for the subject. Out. Filter. Uh, I'll use the default filter, uh, but you can use the filter as per the requirement. If you want to allow some specific traffic, you can do that with the default filter. All the traffic will be allowed between these two L3 out. So I'll go to L3 out. Uh, 
one external EPG. We'll go to the contract. I'll configure the new created contract in as a consumer one. And uh, for the LC out to external EPG, we'll call that contract as a provider. Let me go to the contract. Yeah, here we can see. So this L3 out one EPG L3 out one, which is a consumer, and L3 out two EPG L3 out two, that is a provider. So let me. Go to the CLI. So now let me check the route. We still don't have route. Okay, we still don't see the route is leaked between two VRF. So what is missing here is the contract scope that should be tenant layer by default. It is VRF. So we'll have to change to scope to the tenant. We'll submit it. Now let me check. Yeah. Now we have a both hundred and two hundred out in the VRF three. Let me check on the one o three. Yeah, we have both hundred and two hundred out here. Thank you for watching this video.